In this video, we're going to prove that this infinite sum uh, converges. To do it, we're going to use something called Dirichlet's test. So Dirichlet's test. So I'm quickly going to state uh, the test in case you're not familiar with it. So there's two conditions in the test. The first one says that if you have a sequence, say a sub k, that it converges to zero. So this converges to zero, and the arrow is going down, uh, and that's there to indicate that it's also decreasing. So it converges to zero in a decreasing way, so it is decreasing as well. And two, if you take this finite sum, let's use k again, of say b sub k, and I'll use a little m here, this is actually bounded. That means that it's less than or equal to some constant m for all positive integers m. And here, it's really important that m is constant. So here, m is constant. So big M does not depend on little m. Okay. If both of these conditions hold, then Dirichlet's test tells us that the infinite sum of the product of a sub k and b sub k actually converges. Okay, so in this proof, we're just carefully going to use Dirichlet's to show that this infinite sum converges. This actually converges conditionally, but since this video is so hard to make, it's kind of long, I'm only going to show convergence, and then maybe later I'll make another video to show that it does not converge absolutely. Okay, so it's pretty clear how to use Dirichlet's maybe now. So we're going to set a sub k, at least this part should be clear, that's 1 over k. And then b sub k, well that has to be what's left over, that's sine k. And now we can just mention that condition 1 holds. So note, a sub k, which is equal to 1 over k, this converges to 0 and it's decreasing as k approaches infinity. So condition one of Dirichlet's test holds. Now the challenge is to show condition two. So let's go ahead and write down the finite sum. So consider the finite sum as k runs from one to little m of sine k. And we have to show that this finite sum is actually bounded. So what I did was I went on the internet and I googled trig identities. <laughs> And I found this one. So 2 sine A sine B is equal to a cosine of A minus B minus cosine of A plus B. You might say, well, why did I decide to use this one? Well, here we have sine K, but we only have one sine. Well, we can always multiply this by another sine function. So I guess you could use anything. I decided to take this and multiply it by 2 sine 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So then, 2 times the sine of 1, and again, the choice of sine 1 is pretty arbitrary. And k runs from 1 to m of sine k. All right, this is a number, and it does not depend on the index of summations. We can certainly bring it inside the sum end. So this is equal to the sum as k runs from 1 to little m of 2 sine 1 sine k. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and use our trig identity. So this is equal to the finite sum as k runs from 1 to m. And here a is going to be 1 and b is k. So this is going to be cosine of 1 minus k minus cosine of 1 plus k. And the goal here, again, is to show this is bounded. So if we take the absolute value, this should be smaller than something. So here we have a 1 minus k. And if you notice, like if I plug in 10, I get 1 minus 10. That's negative 9. So I didn't want to deal with that. So what I did was I used the fact that cosine was even. So you can rewrite cosine of 1 minus k as cosine of negative 1 times k minus 1. And because cosine is even, you know, it eats the negative signs. This is cosine of k minus 1. And this is because cosine is even, right? What does that mean? That means the cosine of minus x is equal to the cosine of x. So let's go ahead and rewrite our sum one more time. So this is equal to the finite sum as k runs from 1 to m 
of cosine of 1 plus k minus cosine sorry, cosine of k plus k minus 1, messed up here, k minus 1, uh, cosine k plus 1. Okay, so that is our finite sum. So cosine of k minus 1. So we have here. All right, now we have to be really, really careful. Now we have to look for a pattern. So I'm going to write really small, maybe switch colors. And we're carefully going to plug in numbers. So first we're going to plug in the number 1. So we're going to get parentheses cosine well, let's see, 1 minus 1 is 0, so this is the cosine of 0, minus, and then 1 plus 1, well, that's 2, so this is the cosine of 2, plus. So now we're going to plug in 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so that's the cosine of 1, minus cosine, and then 2 plus 1 is 3. Let's do a couple more plus, now we're plugging in 3, you've got to be really careful, cosine, 3 minus 1 is 2, minus, and then 3 plus 1 is 4, let's do one more, plus, cosine, now, let's see, we plugged in 1, we plugged in 2, we plugged in 3, now we're going to plug in 4, so cosine of 3, minus, cosine of well, we plugged in 4, so 4 plus 1 is 5. Let me do one more, just for good measure. This is cosine, and where are we? We're at 1, 2, 3, 4, plugging in 5. Plugging in 5, we get cosine of 4 minus cosine of 6. I think that's good. Plus, dot, 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 plus. Now, you can go ahead and plug in M, but um, I found it better to actually, ha I had to think about plugging in m minus 1. So let's plug in m minus 1. So this is parentheses, cosine. So m minus 1 minus 1 is m minus 2. And then minus, and then we're plugging in m minus 1. So m minus 1 plus 1 is m. So cosine of m. And then last one, we just plug in m. So this is cosine of m minus 1 minus and then cosine of m plus 1. I can't believe I fit it all in one line. All right, let me switch colors here. And now we just have to carefully look for a pattern. Well, cosine of 0 is 1, and I don't see any other cosine of zeros here. So this guy is taken care of. So uh, cosine of 0 is 1. That's called progress. All right. And look at here, cosine of 2. This doesn't cancel with the one before it. It cancels with the one on the end that's one, two before it. So again, this cancels on with the one at the end that's two before it. So this one cancels with the one at the end that's two before it. Cosine of one's not going to go away. So cosine of one. Okay. This one cancels with the one at the end that's one, two before it. This one cancels with the one at the end that's one, two before it. So this one will cancel with the one at the end that's before it. This one cancels with some term over here. This one cancels with the one at the end that's before it. And so all of this is going to go away. The only thing we're left with is this one and this one. So this is minus cosine of m minus cosine of m plus 1. Success. So we have that 2 sine 1 times the sine of k is equal to all of this. So now what we'll do is we'll divide everything by 2 sine 1. So we end up with the finite sum as k runs from 1 to little m of the sine of k. That's equal to 1 plus the cosine of 1 minus the cosine of m minus the cosine of m plus 1, all being divided by 2 sine 1. And I'm going to be a little bit terse here, but now we're just going to take the absolute value of both sides, right? And we'll use the triangle inequality, right? The triangle inequality to find a bound on this. And you can just think about it, right? The biggest that this can be is 1. The biggest this can be is 1. The biggest this can be is 1. And the biggest this can be is 1. So the largest that the numerator can be is 4. This is less than or equal to the absolute value of 4 over 2 sine 1, which is equal to 2 over sine 1. Sine 1 is a positive number. 
So we found a bound, and so condition two holds from Dirichlet's test, right? Let me scroll back up so you can see it. So condition two said that we had to bound the sum, and we did. We found our m, right? We found our m. And here our big M does not depend on little m, right? This is our big M, and it's independent, right, of little m. So it's, this is an actual legitimate bound. So by Dirichlet's test, so by Dirichlet's, our infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of sine n over n converges. So that is the proof. Again, this converges conditionally. To show that, you would have to show that if you take the absolute value of this, that it diverges. And you can you, you can do that, uh, but um, it's actually a little bit harder than this. So I hope that made sense.